Today we're going to take a look at Jim Henson's Labyrinth, the adventure game. This is published by River Horse, and I thank them for sending me a copy of this book. This is a self-contained RPG game, very rules light, extremely accessible for those, and really it seems almost designed for those who are not role players, who have never played a role-playing game before, and we'll get into the reasons why. For those of you who are solo RPGers watching this, as I suspect many of you are, I will be talking about ways in which I think this can be of use to solo players, although I'm going to say right up front in the video that this is not going to be a playthrough. I don't think this lends itself to solo play. It's not designed to be solo played, and indeed it doesn't really lend itself to it, but I'm going to make some suggestions about ways that this is an excellent resource for soloists, almost like to use it almost like an exercise book, a creative solo exercise book. And we'll get into how and why I think that as we look through it. For those of you that are familiar with the the, the movie from the 80s, The Labyrinth, or Labyrinth, and the, you can see the cover art here. This is the Goblin King, which was played by David Bowie in the movie. This book is based on and is an enactment of that intellectual property and licensed as such. It contains, it's a beautiful production. We'll look at that as well. And this includes a really cool, well, what initially I thought was a really cool thing, which is that the two D6s you need are embedded in the book. Although I'll say practically speaking, it is doesn't work very well because as soon as you open the book, they fall out and you have to be super careful with the pages not to rip anything. But it's it's a great idea. I'm not sure how well it works in practice, but the, the D6s that you need are contained in the book. And the if you remove the dust jacket, you can see if you're familiar with the movie, you can possibly remember that the way they have made the cloth binding of the book is to duplicate the book. This is the a color signature in the back, which has stills from the movie. And this is, at the beginning of the movie, the book that the young girl is reading. So that's a cool meta reference to the book. And overall, the production of this is fabulous. I'll show you the couple of the credits here. The adventure author is Ben Milton, who may be familiar to you from Nave and Maze Rats. I've done both of those game sets, uh, game rules on this channel, and I'll put links to those videos here as well as below. Ben Milton is one of my favorite designers of RPGs that can be utilized so easily for solo play, and I've had a lot of fun with his work and actually may turn to that again in future videos. Jack Caesar is the rules author for the game, and the rules in this game are very, very simple. It says easy to learn rules, perfect for the first time player, and indeed that is the case. It comes with a bookmark that, in essence, explains the rules to you on one page. And what this is, this is the GM, or in this case, it's called the Goblin King, is the assigns a difficulty to the task and you are rolling 1d6 and if you're meeting or exceeding that number you will have a success. If you are rolling with advantage you can roll 2d6s and take the higher roll. If you're rolling with disadvantage you can take 2d6s and have the lower roll and it is, they call it, improved and hindered here. So that's that that's in essence the rules and the to play the game it is it's it's touted here as an adventure game and indeed it is i mean it's an rpg but it's also a game in the sense that the structure of when there is a sort of win lose condition of making your way through the labyrinth in 13 days and there are rules for marking your forward progress through the labyrinth and the Goblin King is meant to keep track of that, and if you fail to get to the end by the passage of these 13 days, you will lose. So in that sense, there is a game structure to it. The running the game, I would say, for 
either people who've never played any type of RPG at all, if you're going to be the Goblin King, or say kids who have played RPGs before would be the sweet spot for this if you were running it around the table. Because I think for seasoned players, you could probably drop this into some type of campaign, maybe like a you know, hallucinogenic thing happens and all of a sudden you find yourself from some other campaign in here. But this the the rules themselves, this is not an OSR rule set. They're so, so light that uh, it, I think, would be challenging to fit it or I think it would just have to be it's 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 it is at its own thing. It's designed to be its own thing. The bulk of my review here, as you can see the art here, I believe that one of the artists involved, actually, let me show you the credits here up front. Here we see the credits. The There are guest authors for, I guess, some of the, perhaps some of the adventures, although it, the main adventure is written by Ben Milton, as I said, the rules by Jack Caesar. And the some of the art, I believe, is from sketches actually from the movie and some one or more of the people involved was involved in doing that. The basic structure of each piece of the labyrinth is a double page spread, which will describe the place you are, the situation that you're in, and will have some random tables. And in each section, there'll be a consequences. So for example, I just randomly opened to this. If you found yourself in the encampment, um, you could describe, you could see the description for the three different here things here, are tents, cage creatures, and guards. And then there are some random tables that go with it. The will, they will give you perhaps a little task or puzzle to solve or thing to do to play out through using the rule sets and some consequences. The consequences would be moving forward in your progress or perhaps moving back. Notice that I skipped right over character creation such as it is. Again, it's extremely a light game, so there's not a whole lot to do in terms of creating your characters, but there are different kin, it's called, that you could play, a dwarf, a fiery, a goblin, a human, a knight of yore, a horned beast, or a worm, and you get some very, very basic options that's either a positive or a negative, or perhaps some equipment to use. If you're doing a task by yourself and you have equipment that's relevant, you can roll with advantage. You can also, if you have a party or you would have a party as it's designed to be played, have the party contribute and therefore roll with advantage, which again is rolling both d6s and taking the higher number. So that that's a very, very basic overview. What I want to talk a little bit about, because I know that a lot of viewers here are soloists, is whether and how this can be of use to a solo RPG RPGer. Again, I don't um, I tried to come up with a way to actually create some characters and play through it. And it wasn't that satisfying because again, this is not, and that's the flaw of the attempt, not the flaw of the, the product, because it wasn't designed for that. And this is a great, great world. And it's a great enactment of the labyrinth world from the movie. The way that I would recommend it. So here we have, we'll just show you the picture here in the back. So this is the, the, the world of the movie and you have the outer stone wall area. And then I can't remember, there's different sections that correspond to ultimately getting to the Goblin King's lair. So we have the stone walls, the hedge maze, the land of yore, which is I think the outside area here. Goblin City and the Castle. Goblin City and the Castle for the soloist might be the place to start if you want to try to create a character and run through something that would approximate like the kinds of things I do on the channel with an adventure because in Goblin City you have a concentration of, as you would expect, 
places and there are encounters here that you could have, a lot of it is just going to be suggestive to you. And this is where I think the book could be an aid to solo players, almost to just kind of exercise your imagination within some very, very light constraints of rules. So let's say you were playing a goblin and your character had some goblin features here. And those and had some specific traits that you chose. So for example, let's say one, what you were great at listening and spotting and you were bad at, you were a coward or something like that. That's the the, the overall description of your character. You could roll up some of this using some of these very basic tables. And you could say that you have an explosion blows off the front of a building. And you could have some flavor here. Well, it smells like gunpowder and something, there's horrible singing. Well, who is that? And just use that as a way of making a little story for yourself in setting out into the city. You can either randomly or unintentionally end up somewhere in the city in encountering an NPC here. This is the crier. A goblin sits at the top of a tall marble podium in the center of an open square. As goblins pass, he shouts out recent announcements through a bullhorn. You could roll up. This is a D100 table for an announcement and roll up some goblins that are walking by. Again, you can see that it would just allow you to present yourself with some kind of semi-random situations and descriptions and need to respond to them within the confines of a game. The castle itself is a little more traditional in terms of having a map that you can actually follow because as you would expect, the labyrinth at the beginning of the book is just kind of anywhere and you are just ending up in a place. Here you could do this a little bit more as a traditional dungeon crawl moving from room to room but again you're going to be left with a lot to figure out on your own because the game is not intended to be played substantially without the person playing the goblin king just making this up on his or her own and there are there is at the back here a toolkit. So there are some random tables back here and they would allow you to create, and I think some of the materials duplicated and gathered from what's earlier and maybe some is, and I I couldn't quite figure that out. But for example, if you want to roll up a random dwarf encounter with a name or some random fairies or the random giant badger, you have this here and you can give it random behavior So you could, for example, make it, work it out if you were here in Lunch Ball. Two large crowds of goblins wearing spotted sweaters have gathered in a wide plaza, one crowd at each end. This is like a game within a game. There's a bunch of games within a game in here. There's something like there's a chess game. There's some other puzzle games that exist. A ball is possessed by a huge dog pile of goblins on top of it. Say you want to get the ball or whatever. It's a difficulty five. And you could go to the back here and give these goblins some personalities, give them some motivations, and then just sort of figure out what would happen to your story if you did that. There are sentient plants and random worms. Generally speaking, some random encounters, random potions that you could get. Again, these aren't the impact of these potions are not going to be specifically outlined here, but you could use that yourself or decide yourself what's the sphere of silence? What does zero friction get you or mean? What would a belt buckle with a gargoyle gargoyle face do for you? So there's there is a, a bit of that at the end, and I think that you could piece it together to make something like that work. You put yourself, just drop yourself into this fireworks factory. 
you're on the main floor, goblins are assembling explosives and rockets of all types, and decide for yourself what how you wanted to play that out and make it work in terms of, like I said, just sort of exercising your solo RPG imagination and storytelling in the context of, in this case, a very light rule structure. So let's look inside Labyrinth. It's it's a beautiful physical product. And as I said, I think for the for the solo player, even just to read through it and think about the way this adventure was put together and the types of things that are put into each section. So here we have just the elaboration, I guess, of the story with here we have this prompt, for example. And so for example, here is a steel colossus slowly detaches itself from the gates and lumbers toward you, its eyes gleaming with cold fury. There are different systems here. It says roll four times to get different systems for this thing. It it just gives you an opportunity to think about the, even if you take it outside of just dis, dis, disregarding the rules and at all, to think about the ways in which something is developed with detail and how that enables a response on the part of the player. I think it's instructional to to read it in that kind of way. So this is perhaps a strange way of recommending a book, but again, for I'm just looking at this primarily right now for the solo player, it, it, it could serve almost as a, as a workbook or an exercise book to, to dissect and view how somebody, in this case, Ben Milton, a very accomplished game designer, creates these settings and what types of details are elaborated and take that information and use it as you play other solo rules. Additionally, I think it is for the for a set of players who does not have a lot of gaming experience, or even frankly, if you yourself have not been a GM around a table very much or at all, this would be a great place to start because it, certainly with any type of solo RPG gaming experience and this in your hand, running this for players, especially players new to RPGing, I think you'd feel pretty confident in running an excellent and involving session.